to uh, sort of test out on the screen exactly how we're going to fly this mission before we uh, launch it for real. So what you see here is an Atlas V 401 configuration. This is the smallest of the Atlas Vs that we're building today. It will lift off uh, with about 900,000 pounds of thrust, and we will actually have onboard video cameras, so you should be able to see uh, some real pictures uh, like this when we're flying. Uh, this booster stage that you see burning right now is powered by liquid oxygen and kerosene. It's a high-grade kerosene called RP-1, rocket propellant 1, and it will burn for approximately four minutes. As we use up the fuel in that stage, we'll shut down the engines, and then we'll separate that booster stage from the second stage, what we call our Centaur upper stage. Uh, Centaur will then begin the first of two burns. Uh, shortly after it ignites the first time, we'll jettison the payload fairing since we're uh, up above most of the atmosphere and the uh, spacecraft no longer need to be protected. This first 10-minute burn will then put us in what we call a parking orbit coast. And this view here shows you how we use some of the uh, big antennas uh, that the Air Force owns to track the vehicle and get telemetry data back. So we, we will stay in touch uh, with the vehicle during this phase of the mission and we'll be able to uh, understand exactly what's happening as we fly along and hopefully we'll uh, get some good video coverage back as well. Now we're coming up on Miko 1, that's main engine cutoff 1. And on some days uh, where we have a very long parking orbit coast, we put the vehicle into what we call a PTC roll. That's a passive thermal control roll that you see here. And that's uh, simply to uh, keep one side of the vehicle from pointing at the sun for too long and, and overheating. It's a, it's a simple thermal control measure that we do. Uh, we won't be doing that if we fly today because the parking orbit coast is not very long. Uh, once we're in position for the second burn at the end of the parking orbit coast, we'll reorient to that second burn attitude and we'll light the engines again. In a moment here you'll see we uh, flow propellants to chill the engine down and then we light the propellants. This second engine burn will last for about five minutes and when we're done with this engine burn we are on our way to the moon. Shortly after that engine burn is complete, we'll reorient the vehicle to the attitude that the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft wants to be separated at, and we'll issue the separation command. And now the LRO mission is on its trajectory to the moon that will get it there approximately four days later. And now, for the LCROSS part of the mission, we will begin a series of maneuvers. need to get L is too great for the uh, control thrusters that we use. So we are going to uh, do what we call a guided blowdown. We will actually flow propellants through the engines but not light them. And by doing this, we get a few hundred pounds of thrust, and that's enough to get LCROSS into the orbit that it needs to go into. Uh, once we've got it into approximately the right orbit, we'll put the Centaur into this uh, flat spin that you just saw, and we'll continue to deplete the propellants. The idea is to get as much of the residual propellants out of the vehicle as we possibly can so that they don't s serve as a contamination source when we impact the moon in a few months. Uh, once we've done that, we'll uh, trim that orbit up with the uh, hydrazine system, our normal uh, control system. And once we've inserted LCROSS onto a, an accurate trajectory, then we will also try to deplete our hydrazine uh, fuel as much as possible. And again, what we want to do is we want to get rid of as, as many of the propellants on the vehicle as we possibly can so that uh, when Centaur impacts the moon, we don't contaminate that plume uh, with our own uh, water or own chemicals. Here you see that hydrazine depletion phase happening right now. We fire the thrusters in pairs so that they cancel each other out. And then about four hours into flight, after we've uh, depleted the propellants on Centaur as much as we can, we will issue a command to the LCROSS spacecraft telling it that it is now in control. And in a very unique role reversal that I don't believe has been performed before, we will actually become the payload of the spacecraft. The LCROSS spacecraft will then act as a shepherding satellite. It will uh, put Centaur on a very precise trajectory. It takes about four months to set this trajectory up, uh, after which uh, Centaur will be guided to a, an impact on the lunar south pole. 
here you see the uh, Centaur upper stage with uh, El Cross, which is now in charge, uh, approaching the moon for the first time. We'll actually pass under the South Pole and get a gravity assist from the moon that will carry uh, the vehicle stack into a large orbit that actually goes around the moon and the Earth. And again, about four months later, uh, El Cross will have set up the trajectory so that Centaur will impact in the right spot on the moon. Uh, just before that impact, L cross will separate. We want to build up about four minutes of separation distance between L cross and the Centaur, and then L cross will actually fly down through the plume that Centaur generates and uh, analyze that plume for evidence of water ice. Well, Vern, it looks like the Centaur has a very unique and um, not done before type of mission, I believe. I think we are doing things on this mission that a uh, launch vehicle has never uh, tried to do before in space. Uh, an another thing that makes this mission very interesting for us is it's actually uh, a return to our roots, if you will. Uh, Centaur was actually designed for lunar and planetary missions in the 1960s, and Centaur launched the seven surveyor missions in the late 60s that paved the way for Apollo. This will actually be Centaur's ninth mission to the moon, but the first one in 41 years. Tell us a little bit now. We're we're looking at weather. What uh, do you think our strategy is going to be from here on at this point? Oh, we have some weather moving down from the north, and as you can imagine, we have.